Hey church family, we are now at Good Friday and it, it really is a good Friday for us as Christians. Even though it was a horrible Friday for Jesus and what he suffered, um, he laid his life down for us and it's a good Friday because through the cross is redemption. Through the cross is eternal life for, for sinners who, who don't deserve anything from God but judgment. And so we celebrate our Lord and Savior. We celebrate who he is and his great love for us and laying his life down for us. That's what we're after. Um, we also, before I forget, wanted to invite you um, tonight, if you're watching this in the morning um, or the midday or afternoon, uh, come to, to our Good Friday service at 6 p.m. in the worship center. We're going to have a Good Friday service where we celebrate what a Good Friday it is and what Christ did. So we're here in the Gospel of Matthew again, and we're in, we're in chapter 27 now where, where the crucifixion of Jesus happens and I think hopefully most of us by now understand why he died but let's look a little bit at the narrative of how it went about. Um, Judas betrayed Jesus and um, he goes to hang himself. At this point Jesus uh, on Monday or on Friday morning is led to Pilate. Now Jesus comes before Pilate. This is a big deal, right? They they haven't gotten very far with their false witnesses and their sham trials. Now they need they know they need the Romans to really pull this off. Um, to really have a crucifixion. And one cool thing to notice in the text is that, not that Jesus suffered, but one cool thing to notice is that um, the crucifixion of Jesus under Pilate and the Romans is a fulfillment of scripture. Um, in Psalm 22, it actually says that, that they have pierced my hands and my feet, right? And the Romans were the ones with the crosses. The Romans were the ones who were crucifying and piercing hands and feet. And so this whole thing is also a fulfillment of scripture in how he died and a fulfillment of, of Jesus's own words that the kind of death he would die and glorify God. So Judas goes to hang himself um, because he, he couldn't uh, find a place for repentance after this. It was too late for him. He, did, he didn't truly repent, and he just ends his life. Um, and Jesus is before Pilate, and he, he gives an account before Pilate. And here's the thing. Pilate finds him innocent. Um, even his wife is like, leave. You know, I had this dream about this righteous man. Leave him alone. Pilate doesn't really want to do this, but Pilate wants to save his own skin more than do what is just. And that's just what happens. They pressure him politically. Um, they basically blackmail him kind of implying that, hey, if you don't do this, you're, you're not a friend of Caesar because Jesus is claiming to be a king and you're not killing him, right? Anybody who claims to be a king opposes our king, Caesar, right? And so they pull a fast one on Pilate and he's kind of pigeonholed and, and they sort of force his hand, if you will. Um, and so Pilate in verse 24 delivers Jesus to be crucified. They scourge him. He, he claims to be innocent, but really he's also guilty. Jesus in verse 27 through 31, he, he's completely shamed and ridiculed. Uh, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and they took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. I mean, this is... This is just a mock uh, honoring of the king of the Jews. They don't really believe he's the king, and they're just shaming him and mocking him and embarrassing him. The whole thing is just an embarrassing moment for Jesus, at least, at least they think it is. Verse 32, now we get into uh, the area where, of the scripture where Jesus is actually crucified. They went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered wine to drink mixed with gall. When he tasted it, he would not drink it. He didn't, he didn't take any deadening of the senses for this. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. That's a fulfillment of prophecy. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Now, <laughs> they're putting this above his cross to show, usually they showed what, what they're being killed for or what they're being executed for. So he's being executed for being the king of the Jews, but the irony is he really is. And so he's telling the truth and they're killing him for it anyways, unjustly, just as, just as the, the scriptures had predicted. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right, one on the left, where he says, you know, today you'll be with me in paradise to the thief on the cross. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself 
if you're the son of God, come down from the cross. Well, he could have, right? He could have just stepped right off the cross if he wanted to. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. If he's the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified also reviled him in the same way. Now, here we go. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the, all the land until the ninth hour. So for three full hours while Jesus was on the cross, complete darkness. Complete darkness. The sun, for a time, stopped giving its light in this area. It's a sign of, of, of darkness, even judgment falling upon the righteous one for us, the unrighteous. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is in Psalm 22. And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. And then it goes on, verse 51, the curtain of the temple is torn in two from top to bottom. Access to God, the Holy of Holies, is now open through Jesus, right? The earth shook, the rocks split, tombs were opened, dead people, dead saints coming out of their tombs, appearing to many in the city. The centurion, in verse 54, sees this, and he even says, truly, this was the Son of God. The first person in this setting to even declare who Jesus is and identify him is a centurion, a Roman centurion overseeing his crucifixion. They see the supernatural things that are happening and he realizes what's going on, that he really is the king of the Jews. There are many women there who had been ministering to him, but Jesus goes up on the cross and he gives up his final breath in verse 50. Look at verse 50. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. At that moment, every sin that we've committed was completely paid for. The sacrifice was complete. He even said while he was on the cross, it is finished. It is finished. We needed this perfect savior. We needed this to happen the way it did because he's the lamb of God, as John would say, who takes away the sin of the world. As soon as he said it's finished and yielded up his spirit, the payment was, was made in full. And it was a perfect sacrifice for sinful people like you and me. Our faith completely needs to be centered on Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. He is our only hope. And we need to rejoice that this is not a bad Friday for us. This is a good Friday for us because through the death of Jesus, redemption is full and final and certain. So let's pray and let's praise God for Jesus and his death. Lord, thank you for the cross that Jesus was crucified for us, that he bore our sins in his body on the cross that he cried out, it is finished, and he suffered horrible things for us, shed his blood for us, because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. But the, the perfect son of God shed his blood for us so that all of our sins through faith in him could be washed away. That it truly is finished. And we want to dwell on that. We want to thank him for that. We want to glorify you for that, God. And we want to rest knowing that through the death of Jesus and his work for us, we have peace with God through faith in Jesus. We are right with God through faith in Jesus. All sin is washed away, that we are justified and stand blameless and spotless in him. Thank you for the good news of Good Friday. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.